Hi. All right, well, this time I'd like to talk uh, more about the uh, the bachamto. Um, the problem is I I'm afraid that the origin of the bachamto in terms of its form, its technique, has been never written down. Um, I think uh, as long as uh, since uh, since Silim Tao, Cham Kiu, Biu Ji, Mok Yan Zhong, all these has been put together by experts. Um, we think that it's uh, before Yun Kei San. Uh, perhaps uh, his Sifu, Feng Xiu Qin, or I don't know, Feng Bo Cheng, uh, it's these people that are masterminded at putting this into a form and putting it into Siu Lim Tao Cham Kiu Biu Ji and Mok Zhong and these forms are incredibly well thought out. Um, the form that's coming out of Hong Kong for the Bat Zam Do, it's been hatched recently. Recently, I mean by the last uh, 40 years. Um, not going to say whom, uh, uh, but uh, it's not put together by these great grandmasters that made Siu Lim Tao Cham Kiu Biu Ji. So it really is open, I would say, to my knowledge, it's open to interpretations. Uh, with the techniques of Bachamdo because there isn't really a real form that everybody practices. Uh, I don't see uh, a form coming out of China. I don't, I don't see uh, a form coming out of uh, you know, Vietnam where Wing Chun, part of it went to Vietnam, some of it, a lot of it is in China uh, with uh, Yun Kei San, Sam Nam and, and, and that lineage. Um, I think that the, the, they kept this form with the Bajamdo so secretive uh, that a lot of it is really lost. And they say that, yeah, a lot of it you can do with the hand technique and do the same thing as the Bajamdo. But, uh, you know, still you can't translate it directly. Um, as you know, um, in the hand technique, we like to attack the core, the center line of your opponent. Whereas, uh, if you use any kind of weapon whatsoever, you realize that uh, the first thing you attack is the fingers, the wrist, and the arm. You, you don't attack the body. So it's completely reversed. So there are certain things that you can translate, and there are certain things that you cannot translate straight from the hand form to the dou form. Well, of course, like beauty and stuff like that, you can easily translate into the dou form because that, you know that, that is exactly that. But uh, there are some things that you cannot translate. Uh, for instance, um, the one or two key major features I would like to add is that um, uh, in the hand-to-hand -hand technique, in, in any form, you need to have a lot of power. Um, if you tell a, a six-year-old to punch you in the chest, probably it's not going to hurt you because a six-year-old is probably going to weigh about 60, 70, 80 pounds max. Um, they don't know how to generate force, they don't have a whole lot of force and power behind them, they don't have a lot of weight, so that you tell a six-year-old to punch you, it's not going to hurt. Therefore, in the hand-to-hand -hand techniques, we have to really concentrate on power, force. But, when it comes to the Batam Do, it's a knife. Okay, and if you give this knife that's sharpened to a six-year-old and tell the six-year-old to stab you with it and cut you with it, they probably easily can kill you with it. Uh, because there, there's very little force needed to cut somebody with the sword like this. Therefore, um, the practices are slightly different. Um, if you, there was a sword fight, a sword duel between two people, and one guy is a muscular, strong muscular guy, and the other guy is a 98 pound weakling, and if they're both holding a sword with the muscular guy have an advantage, a clear advantage? No. The muscular guy does not hold any advantage whatsoever if they both held a sword. The 98 pound weakling small man is just on par with the muscular guy. So therefore, when we practice with the Bachanto, I don't agree that people are trying to use it as if they are punching because you're not. You don't need force to slice somebody with this. It takes no force. If this was sharp, just the weight of the sword 
will easily cut. Um, second of all, well, you need to chop down really hard, but you have to remember that these are street weapons. They're personal street weapons that can easily be concealed within your clothing. These are not battlefield weapons. They're way too short and they're, you're not going to reach anybody. And in the battlefield, you wear a lot of armor. You're going to be completely fully armored. Helmets, uh, shoulder guard, whatever. Armored all the way. In battlefield, yeah, you need the heavy weapon. You need a big weapon. You need to chop through the armor to attack somebody. But these are street weapons. They are not battlefield weapons. So on the street, People are not going to be armored. They're going to be in regular clothing. Therefore, when you practice with these weapons, you don't need to exert the kind of force that you do with your punches. So the other thing is that you will have to understand that once you've played with a lot of other weapons, then you will learn to appreciate and understand what weapons are and what weapons do. Uh, for example, uh, if you play a game, uh, I have examples of the game that I do. I'm not very good at it. Uh, I have uh, examples of the nunchucks. I play with nunchucks. I played with the spear. I played with the tan to, and then I play with the seung to, and I play with the three sectional staff. Uh, you will realize that all bladed Chinese weapon are all based on two particular things. One is the circular motion and that is dominant. It is, it is so important to understand the circular motion of a sword. Uh, in the circular motion when you need a sword to generate power is the circular motion. You need the circular motion to generate power into the blade, not by thrusting the blade like this. Um, you see a lot of people pick up the bat down though, and they do this kind of thing. That is completely, completely, completely ridiculous. Uh, why? Because if you hold this sword and you do this, you realize how stupid it is. Nobody does this. Nobody does that. Nobody goes like this, hits, and then retract it back to where it came from in a straight linear line. Uh, once again, I say that because this is the father, this is the father of all, all swords, all Chinese weapon, and we rely we rely on a circular motion. Of course, that is also combined with a straight thrust. When you combine this into a circular motion and then a straight thrust is what makes it deadly. Um, the, the, the wrong thing about the people get the wrong idea in Wing Chun is that in Wing Chun they think to seem that it only consists of straight line. So they think all Wing Chun consists of the theory of the straight line. Closest point between A to B is a straight line. So they think a punch is straight. They think a punch is straight. But uh, people seem to forget and not emphasize the triangle and the circle. Uh, triangle is in your stance and in your structure. You have this triangle here that give you the structure to protect yourself from and that's where you get your strength from. Um, the circle is, is actually everywhere. So you say, well, the straight punch, there's no circle. It's straight. But you know what? If I go like this and you look at me do a straight punch, now if you do several of these, It's not so straight anymore. If you trace my fist, you realize that it's a straight line with an arc that comes back. It's a straight line with an arc that comes back. And if you repeat this process, you realize that it's not so straight. It's actually an ellipse here. 
It's a circle. When I say circle, it could mean ellipse. It's not so straight. So there are lots and lots and lots of circles in the Wing Chun. Obviously, you, you have your your Hun Sao, right? You encounter something and it comes forward and you can't get rid of it. You can always Hun. Hun and then you can attack. So that's the circle combined with a straight thrust. Circle combined with a straight thrust. So since in the game the circle is the king of its technique. Without the circle you don't have the game. And the circle comes in every kind of bladed weapon or even a staff in Chinese martial arts. So when you pick up these things and if you've done weapons, Chinese weapons, you realize that it's not a straight technique. These are circular techniques. Um, you're not going to do one guy and nothing else afterwards. Your enemy is going to be moving around. When you do a gun here, you're going to attack here and you're going to defend here. So when you attack, defend here, your enemy is going to move over here. Why? Because they know you can chop down on this side. So when you go like this, they're going to run to over on this side. So when you go like this, you have to quickly go to the other side. So what did I just do? A circular motion. So you can go on the inside. You can rotate this on the inside, or you can rotate this on the outside. The outside is safer, the inside is quicker but more dangerous to yourself because you can easily cut yourself with it. So when you do it together, when you practice in the beginning, okay, yes, you can't go like this. But once you get used to that, you need to practice this. You need to practice this. You need to connect your moves together. You need to connect your moves together in a circular motion. And if you're doing it in a circular motion, you're doing it right. None of this Thing. This is like boxing. People go like this, they pick up, the, these are not hard weapons, these are soft weapons. What is the soft weapon? What is a hard weapon? A hard weapon is when somebody comes at you with a strike, you block it force against force. These are not that kind of weapons. These are Chinese weapons, they are soft weapons. They may look like hard weapons and they can be used as hard weapons, but they are soft weapons. In other words, if there's a staff coming down here, we don't block it and stop it right in its path. We block it, then we guide it out of our danger zone. We guide it, block it, we guide it out of our danger zone, and then once it passes our center, we attack. Therefore, these are soft weapons. So you can do a tan da. You can do a bong, a bong tan. And as soon as you get the weapon, you can do a tan da. And tan da, pak da, pak da. Rotate this from underneath. So these are all circular motion. You really need to understand the circular motion of these swords. So to doing this chopping down in a straight line doesn't make any sense. Uh, you want to chop down, chop like this. These are circular motion. These are circular motion. These are circular motion. Not the, These are not circular motion. These don't work at all. They're slow. You're stopping all the weight there and you're bringing it all the weight back and you're stopping the weight and you're bringing it and stopping all the weight and you're bringing it and stopping all the weight. 
when you do that, it's like doing boxing. It's like boxing. You punch, throw all the weight in your punch, and then when it gets enough, then you lose all of that power. And you bring it all back, and then you're stopping it. And then you fire all the power in your other arm, and if you miss, you lose all that power, and you bring it all back. Two, three shots of that, and I'm going to be out of breath. In Wing Chun, we don't do that. In Wing Chun, we punch. If we punch, if we get nothing, we gone. If we gone, we get nothing, we rotate us up to a time. And we time, we don't get nothing, we do gone again. And we gone, we don't get nothing, we bring it up to a zat. With zat, we don't nothing, we get a bill. Bill, we don't get nothing, we do a chop. So, in Wing Chun, we try not to expend our energy and waste it. Once the hand is extended, we don't waste all that energy and bring it back. Hands extended, but if the target moves, we do to a lap. You know, when we lap, we don't go, we, we try to come around. We try to use that continuous flow of energy, which is in a circular motion. Therefore, if you do this kind of thing, and this kind of thing, and this kind of thing like this, it's completely wrong. You go like this, and this, reaches the end, this comes out. If this comes out, you don't, you miss, this goes like that. And this goes like that, it depends on where your enemy is running to. If your enemy runs to this side, this comes up from under between my arm, and chop this side. And then if I chop this side, if your enemy runs here or here, it's okay, this can come up to this side. And if it runs there, if they run over here, then this can come out from underneath. If this comes out from underneath, and your enemy's going to run there, because I can keep chopping on that side, your enemy's going to run there, then for this comes out. This comes out, and that goes there. So you can all have this circular motion. The only difference with Bajanto and Butterfly Knife is the Bajanto keep the circle really small within this area. We don't circle big. We don't. We don't circle big like the Wudito. With the Wudito, we do this kind of thing. We do this kind of thing. We do this kind of thing. And we do very big circles. Okay. With the bachando, we do tiny circles. The circles need to stay within this box, and that that is where where we we keep our circle. Whereas the wutito, they circle with the entire body. We don't we don't we circle very small. We circle within this area here. Forwards and backwards. And as far as uh, the stabbing goes, once again, you need to really have some dexterity. The wrist have to be soft. Not that it's going to drop out of your hand, but you need this idea of circling the blade to generate power into the blade. So if it's a stabbing, is this kind of stabbing. The coming back is as important as going forward. Going forward and coming back. As soon as you go forward and if you don't get anything, it automatically comes back with this end facing the enemy. And the stabbing is not from here to here is there's a rotation here when it, it goes out there's a rotation uh, why is there a rotation? Uh, it's very simple uh, once again the putting power in the blade if you held this one you notice there's no power in the blade at all therefore like I said if you want to generate a lot of force you have to rotate this. If I'm here and I need to hit something here, I don't just go from here to here. 
There's no power in that. With the game, if I want to go from here to here, with power, I need to go like that. What I did is I just momentarily dropped this thing a little bit, relaxed the wrist a little bit, and get the circular motion going before I start. And then when I start, now you notice this blade went that far and then rotated this far to hit this object here. And that is how you generate power into the blade. People say, well, this blade has no power. How do you chop down? Because you don't know how to use it. The way to put power into this blade is to wind this blade up in a circular motion. And sometimes you need to wind this blade up with your entire body and your spine by turning your spine and winding power in this blade in that way. Now, this looks like it has a lot of power, but if I went here to here, there's no power. And people try to strengthen their wrist by, and strengthen their arm by going like this and generate power and build up their arm muscles to get this power going because they need to stop a staff from coming. But no, that's not how you generate power. That's, that's once again boxing, trying to build up muscles. You're not building a muscle. If you want power here, from here to here, it's not Wing Chun. You don't go from a straight line from A to B. This is sword play now. You gotta use a circular motion. You gotta drop, get this relaxed. Just before you begin, you drop the sword. Let it rotate as you go and chop this way. And you will notice that it's not any slower. You think it's slower, but this is a sword. It's not going to be slow. So you want power here? You put the power of the entire blade into the blade by circling the blade, by relaxing the wrist and doing this motion. And then chop down. You, I'll arrive there same time with just as much power, if not more, than this power. So it's not a straight line, it's a circular line. Some of you might ask the question, well, how am I going to stop a staff from hitting me when I do a gan or a quan? How do I stop that? Don't I need muscle power? Well, this part goes back to Wing Chun. What you need is structural power, not muscle power. Uh, we always stress in Ling Chun your structure. If your structure is correct, then you can support whatever is coming at you. Therefore, in the Bacham Do now, in this case, it's the same thing. Uh, if your structure is correct, if you got your good low gan, a low bong, and top wu sao, or or you got your your bong. Bong Wu Sao like this, and something's coming at you, you have to have your good structure, you have to have your good triangle. You know, you're making a triangle here. And if your structure is correct, you would be able to stop a staff that's coming at you. Don't forget though, these things are pretty heavy. Uh, right now, I put some extra weight at the end here to make it even heavier, and they're two pounds each. So if you're have all this weight plus when you meet the weapon like I said you rotate uh, notice this blade rotates to go there so you rotate the weapon this rotates this way and this this goes this and this goes like this so you're getting this action here which is putting power in your blade plus you got your yuma right you got your stance and you got your yuma so when you do this to block with structure, it's pretty powerful. I've uh, tried this uh, at home and I tell somebody to whip the staff at me with uh, all their strength and when I did this, it stops the staff right in its track with not a problem, with a lot of power to spare. And, uh, and this is how you can generate power in the toe, one is to rotate to generate power, and second is to have structure. 
there's no need to build up muscle. Now obviously it's good to have muscles, it's good to have a strong wrist, and I mean that in the beginning you loosen up to attack, but at the end, after the rotation, you want to now at this point chopping down, you want to stiffen up the wrist. So it obviously it's not like I don't mean to fight with a slim wrist and then this is going to fall to the ground for sure. But you do need to be flexible and in the beginning to wind the sword up, you need to have a flexible but strong wrist to wind it up. Once you wind it up, then you can stiffen up as it goes. Therefore, I would conclude that Pachando and its technique it's got to follow everything else in Kung Fu, everything else in sword play, in any kind of weapons play, Chinese weapons play. It needs, to, it needs to follow the circular motion, not a straight line A and B, because that's completely wrong. So, have a nice day. I hope you find this interesting. Bye for now.